How's it going, everybody? It's AZ Customs. Uh, we uh, we working on this old piece of shit Dodge truck oh, I got shit. here. Yanking the motor out. <laughs> so it's not again. Here, here's the old motor. She's making a little knocking noise. And there's the new motor. Hopefully she ain't gonna make a knocking noise. Truck of Chuck. Apparently it's the truck of truck. Of course it's in the junk right now. No, it's the truck so, of Chuck. Truck of truck. Yes. So anyways, <clears throat> reason I'm shooting this video is that he blew the engine. He's got a rod knock. So he bought a donor truck so. and now he is swapping out the motors. All right, so the first thing they did to start removing the motor is they removed the front bumper and the front brace and basically you don't have to do that obviously to remove the radiator but you do need to do that to pull the motor and it's better to go ahead and do, get it done to make the radiator removal easier so we also went ahead and drained the radiator there's a drain plug at the bottom we got a freaking what is, is that a wheelbarrow yeah <laughs> you got a wheelbarrow to collect the coolant. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta you do. You gotta do what you gotta do. And then there's four bolts to dis uh, to uh, disengage the auxiliary fan shroud shroud from the radi radiator. This is your heater core line. You have two clamps connected to a coupling. All right. Basically, you're disconnecting all the coolant lines the, right now. The heater core line. Yeah. Nice thing about Dodge is they actually know you're going to replace the motor, so they go ahead and do that. <laughs> they, are, they know you're going to replace the motor eventually. Yeah, and of course, vacuum lines and all that. I really wish you would have bought me those hose clamp pliers, Anthony. Huh? I really wish you would have bought me those hose clamp pliers. Those hose pliers that are rounded like that. Where am I sweating? This time it was not your fault. Actually, the first time was not your fault. I really Disconnecting don't like it at the all. transmission I'm lines. Like all right, so what's that? That's the transmission in our cooler. This? Yeah. Yeah, on the trans cooler. So this is a brace too. We're just taking this off so it'll just drop down so we can heave ho this big piece of shit, yank our own out of here, and throw that big piece of shit back in here. And hopefully, it'll make noises. This is a fuel line disconnector. Five bucks at O'Reilly's. Oh! We also use for transmission lines. Tell me about the AC. Like, what are you doing with the AC? You're not even you're not even disconnecting any of the AC lines. You're just moving it out of the way, so you don't have to mess it. with the freon. Right. We're gonna undo the entire compressor and move it over so that we don't have to do none of that. Gosh, yeah, you can take it off. Gotcha. We're labeling the spark plug wires. No, we're just labeling some of the disc the connectors that we're taking off. So some of the sensors wires and yeah. such. Yeah, so when we put it back, it just makes life easy. Cool. All right, Ethan, I need your help. Cool. And there goes the radiator. Oh, wait, actually, okay, never mind. Yep, here you go. Oh. Turn this way. Turn this way. Turn this way. Oh. Yeah. One of y'all fart. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, man. I'm the one that just went to the Italian restaurant. I smelled it as soon and as you said it. Is that the fuel clippers? <laughs> it's bad, man. You're the one that got up the bill. And you know, you wait. You wait until, like, everybody's right up here. And now we got the shroud out of the way. Just snip it. He can't see out of that window anyways. Yeah, I don't need to see. Windshield wiper fluid ain't gonna help his ass. If you do it around the edges of it, it can't escape. And then you come back and then throw it into the middle. Yeah, a lot of fluids missing our oil pan, so kitty litter it is. Alright, so <clears throat> pull the compressor out from right here. We just mounted the bolts back on so we can keep track of them. We got that out of the way. Do what? Remove some brackets, unhook the fuel injectors. Yeah, remove some brackets, unhooking the fuel injectors and such. Now we're pulling out the power steering pump. mounting ground bracket. That's a ground, ground him? Yeah, that's the ground. Oh, okay. And then, uh, 
You gotta unattach that too? Yeah, and then that steering gear, that power steering bump will come off. Any of you subscribers out there, you got you an old 70s Duster, Dart, Valiant, or any of those big old body motor cars. This old 360 right here, that's what you want to put in there. You only yank the old 318 out there, the old typewriter, get it out. So you get old 360 Magnum. 360 yep. Magnum. Get some good power for cheap. You get it out of one of these chucks, super cheap. You can either put a carburetor on there or you can keep fuel injected, keep the computer, and have you a cool little race car. There is the power steering pump that we just finally got pulled out. And on to the next one. So we took the power steering pump off and so to disconnect from the lines so that we don't have to re-bleed the power steering cylinder. So just set it to the side basically. Yes. Make it easy. It's easier. And you don't get fluid on the floor. The coil. Now on the 99 Dodges, you cannot get the wire out. So I'm having to remove it so that I can get the wiring out because it is connected to the harness. Now on the 96 that that motor came out of, this comes right out. Do you have to unattach that coil anyways to remove the motor? No, no you It's do just not. to get the wire out of the way. Yes. You also got your vacuum lines and you got vacuum lines back there. And the distributor is also back there. Yeah, the distributor too. You have to remove the intake man, the throttle body. Yes, we have to remove the throttle body so that we can. You can actually see right here. We actually used a plate on that ah. with a spacer. You have to use a spacer, and then you can put like an old school carburetor plate on there. Gotcha. You gotta take this zappy thing off of here. Hopefully. Because what we're gonna do with it. Just take it off, and then we just gonna speed it up, and knock the shit out the cows, out the pasture. See, because there's some Nagasaki bitches. Bully boy right here. Yeah, there's go. a Nag Nagasaki hurley wind. Oh, so you're not pulling all of it. You're just pulling the wiring off of it. Exactly. I'll undo that. Are you pulling that wiring harness off? Yeah, it's your fuel injection. Your injector harness, your alternator harness, and your coil. And there that goes. Yep. And then you can just bang. put it to this side. Yep. Use your windshield wipers to hold it on there. This is a throttle body vacuum. Oh. Ah. I'll just move her out the side too. Okay, that could be so, so this is the ground. Ah. This is the ground strap here, and you also have one at the back of the engine. The one at so the back of the engine? The main. The main. The main. But you have one, this goes to the engine. These All two right. little pigtails, they go to the engine. And this one grounds it to the body. You want to have it properly grounded, or else you'll have issues. You're removing the throttle body now? Yeah, just so I can put that plate on there. And... I mean, do you need to remove that throttle body to remove the motor? Uh, yeah, so you put the plate in for the cherry picker to grab it up. Oh, oh, okay, I got yeah. you. I got you. So you have to remove it anyway. Yeah, you gotta get it out of the way. All right. And there yeah, went the throttle body. There's your throttle cable. Oh, no, that's what made the noise noise. That's interesting. What's that? Currently, we're disconnecting the throttle body. <clears throat> we just found a crack in the intake. <clears throat> so this is what we found right here. Maybe the cause of the old naughty rock. Not sure though. But comment down below if this has ever happened to you before. That is your um, gas line for your rails. It has a crossover tube, so you only have one line. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you so, have but you special can special tool. So you can leave that fuel rail there, though. Yeah, yeah. You leave yeah. all that and your injectors and all that. Okay. 
But you gotta pull that wire harness right there. Does that go into your fuel injectors? Yeah, it goes into yeah. the injectors, it goes into the throttle body, it goes into pretty much everything. And then this fuel line, which you'll so, have to have the fuel line removal tool. Yep. The fuel line removal tool. Fuel line removal. And you have to shove them in there and you compress the two together and then shove the tool in there and then squeeze it and then it'll release the inner tabs and then you can pull it apart. Okay. It's a quick connect. Now when you go to reinstall it, you just push it. It's a push lock. Okay. After a harness here, you got to reposition all your plug wires and run them under. Run them under. Because Dodge likes to uh, put the plug wires on top of this harness. So if you're yanking the motor, you take them from the distributor cap one at a time, run them through this. It's a pain in the ass, but you do it one at a time, you remember where it comes from, and then you can pop it back on there. And there is two plugs in the very, very back. There is two plugs that you do got to disconnect. Here's one of them. Very, very bad. Right here. There's also this one down here that I also unplugged. Wow. Right here. And way back there. Way back there, so. Taking the fuel line off from the fuel rail. Got your special tool. <laughs> this is yeah. that wise. Specialty tool. There it went. <clears throat> There's actually three connectors. You look back here. This one. Jesus. Needs to come out as well. Where? That one way back. That tiny one way back there? Yep. So you're going to need you a it's certified mini screwdriver to pop out those red tabs. And yeah. And it'll pop right off. They's thinking that you're going to be replacing transmissions, not motors. <laughs> so they didn't think of this too well. All right. Now we're finishing pulling off the compressor hoses. Carburetor guys, got one of these laying around here. You have to get you some kind of metal spacer, put on top of there. Where's that little baby? And then it will go Where's against little baby these bolts. Is? If not, you gotta have something Where's else. Baby. And then you can use the factory bolts to go right yeah, back to the intake with well, a couple bolts as washers. Now is that for the cherry picker? This is for the cherry picker so we can grab it right out so we don't have to use bolts like on the block and, or get, go and buy a special plate to pick it up with. So we're finishing off moving this transmission line that's under here and that was bolted up to this bracket over here and it's got another bracket back here. Yeah, I'll step on that. Jesus. Uh, that's right here. Right yeah, right over there. It goes into these two, you just disconnect it. Yeah. Also got this piece on there, but... Also got that piece, yeah. We're just hanging out. Um, well, these are right behind the distributors, too. Uh, transmission bolts on the top that you got to finagle your hands in. Uh, the use of a, a good shorty 14 millimeter. How many transmission bolts? The, so there's the there's bell six, housing there's bolts. There's six total. Six total. So six bell housing bolts? Yeah, two on the top, and then... Four on the... Um, Yep, two on each side on the bottom. One's a little bit, of, one's below the starter, one's above the starter, I believe. Do you reach all the other four underneath? Yeah, you go underneath the chuck for the other four. Gotcha. But these two, you just gotta put your hand back there and kind of feel for them. Uh, so currently we're taking off the exhaust you're from taking the manifold. Off the exhaust from the manifold up there, it's only two bolts. Oh. Need you one big long extension. And uh, let's see, need not that size. So need deep so one on the. That's two bolts on either pipe. Yeah, so one on each side of the pipe. I need one deep socket. So here's the first pipe, right there, and then second pipes right there. All right, so these two bolts are 14 millimeters. Good if you have a deep deep socket. Also, very long extension. Well, they have these little stoppers from the factory, but if you go try and use that, they snap off. So now what you gotta do, get you a wrench. Oh. So you can see the exhaust, um, the exhaust pipe from the type top here. There's two bolts on either side of the flange that hold it to the manifold. There's, two, there's a clip on each bolt that is supposed to basically keep the bolt from spinning freely when you're trying to loosen it from the bottom. But this vehicle's like 20-something years old now, so the clips failed, 
So basically what we had to do is get a flathead screwdriver down there and remove the clip from the top of each bolt and then get a 14 millimeter, a 14 millimeter short wrench. Here's the second exhaust pipe. Get me the air gun. We got the two bolts right here. Hopefully we'll be able to remove it without having to hold the top bolts again like we had to do on the other side. Here's those clips there on the top of the bolts. And as you can see, they're not really doing their job after 20, 25 years. So we're moving starter with giant breaker bar. Lots of torque on this thing. That's how you do that. You know why? They're all them air tools. You know what you just need? All the golden. Oh. Muscle. He benched 130 with those arms last week. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, 135. 135, excuse me. So, what are we removing the starter for? So that we can take the dust cover off, so that we can get to the torque converter bolts, and take the torque converter bolts off. How many bolts are they holding the starter on? Two? two. Alright, good. So, there are two bolts. We got a lot of torque on them. Okay, we have to spin the engine over because you, there's only a certain spot where you can get the torque converter bolts. No, you can yeah. Just leave them. We have to take one out, and there will be four of them. Pop a bolt out, turn it, take another bolt out until you have all four of them. You do not want to leave the torque converter in there when you're trying to take the transmission out. It won't work. Um, if you was to drop the transmission, you can still get it out, but. The torque converter is splined with the right, transmission, right. and when it, also when you pull it out, you have a lot of travel, which that's going to make it very difficult. Mm -hmm. But also when you do that, the torque converter holds a lot of transmission fluid, so when you do, it's going to puke everywhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that on the Beamer. Exactly. So you want to, you want to. Yeah, the damn Beamer. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely want to keep it at, up Good. against that transmission, and you won't have those issues, and it comes right out so much easier. I'm pulling out the transmission, pulling out the transmission bolts right now. Yep. One great mechanical engineering thing that Dodge did was put a transmission bolt right next to the oil filter. Right. So you gotta yes. take the oil filter off to get to the damn tranny bolt, which is right here. So here's that's the transmission bolt right there. Yep, and there's the oil filter. What size are these transmission bolts? 16 millimeters. 16 millimeter, and there's supposed to be six in it. Yep, two on top, four on the bottom. This is the fancy engine hoist. Heavy duty, two ton, folding engine crane. So you just put like what, a little tension on it? A little tension so when that bus is loose, it pop up a little bit. Gotcha. And then you yank her away. Gotcha. How are you removing the motor mount? Uh, we're just popping the three bolts off of it. On the block up. side? Yes, on the block side. Is that easier from than doing it from the frame? <laughs> oh yeah, from the frame for sure. You can get by with just doing just these two bolts, but it just didn't work out that way for us. That's why we're doing it this way. You can actually just pop the one big bolt off, but... It's a pain in the ass? Yeah, just, I don't know. Sometimes it don't work out. Sometimes it's easier. But this one doesn't want to be easy. So for this one, we had to take the bolt out of the transmission for the dipstick tube for the trans fluid. So once you take that out, you can move it over to the side, and then you can get this bolt off right here. What was that, one of the middle... Yeah, it was, it was the middle one. Not the highest one, but it was the one right below it. Alright, is that all the bolts? Um, we got one more on the other side, but that then it's going to be ready to come on out. So don't. Isn't there more bolts on the uh, engine mount on that side? Yeah, I think there's, there's what, one or two more maybe? Yeah. yeah. For us, it was easier to take. Instead of taking the one long bolt that's located right there, blow where my finger's at. Instead of taking just that one out, there's two, or there's three that connect to the block. We're gonna take that out. It just made it easier for us for the last motor we pulled, so. So at this point, we removed the bolts on the engine mount, and we removed all the bolts on the transmission, the transmission to the engine. Bell housing to the engine. Bell housing to the engine. 
and remove those bolts holding the exhaust to the exhaust manifold. So now we are jacking up the jack, putting it underneath the transmission. Putting and, a piece of wood on it. Yeah, Just putting so. a piece of wood on it so it doesn't dent the uh, transmission. And this is basically just to prevent it from uh, slinging down when we pull the motor out. Sometimes it gets stuck to the transmission. Yeah, there's two thumbs. So, you look at this one over here. There we go, perfect. One more cool in there. So, if you look here. You got two little god pins where? ones right here stick out from the, the engine block that yep. slide into the bell housing on both sides and that's just the kind of when you line it up it just it sits it in there so you can put the bolts in and everything's fine oh okay very good yeah. but it makes it a little more difficult to pull out yeah it makes it hard to pull out because then you gotta yank it forward you gotta wiggle it and so sometimes, sometimes you, you just gotta, gotta pry it, pry it. Some, you gotta use a pry bar sometimes and there is the torque converter gushing out and there's some more coolant got one last little ground strap here and we didn't notice that we were pulling where this fucker gets out hopefully It might stand on that. It stands on the back side of your jet. Yep. Okay. Oh, she's out. There it is. Uh, go ahead and drop it down. Get another tire. There you can see the torque converter in there and the transmission. Thanks for watching AZ Customs. This was our successful motor pull on a 99 Dodge Ram 1500. So if you like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel, AZ Classic Customs, and comment down below on other content you'd like to see or other suggestions that we didn't do that would have been any easier. Thank you.